This review is going to be a bit special because I have a task for you after watching this video. Yes, that means you, viewer. But I'm not going to spoil the surprise right now. I'll just say this. I've been going through some animated shorts here on YouTube, mainly the ones that involve furry creatures. And I'm pleasantly surprised at how many of these films are well animated, funny, clever, and more importantly, not from some big studio. Yes, these are all either animation students, graduates, small teams and studios, etc. Today's review features a Chilean short animated film that shows a more realistic approach to marriage and its ups and downs. It actually blew up on YouTube when it came out like months ago. But that's probably due to all the film festivals it was featured at. Internationally, that is. I mean, that didn't happen with my old student film, but that was only one film festival that a couple of people went to, and that's not here or there. Anyway, so how does Here's the Plan compare to other animated films? What does it have to say about nurturing relationships and following your dreams? And ultimately... Here's the Plan is the story of Cat and Dog, I, sorry, Kate and Doug. They're aptly named that because they are a cat and dog couple who have dreams of being a happily married couple that bakes cupcakes together. They have several plans that they go through. Some work, some don't. Sometimes they change jobs, expand their house, you know, all sorts of life decisions. But their desire to bake and start their own bakery acts as a tension between them and the glue that connects them together as well. So, right off the bat, I have to say something. Just gonna get this off my chest right now. Man, they really screwed up on the voice acting. I'm not saying they're poor actors. No, 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 no. They got actual actors that are married together in real life themselves. So, there is that as well. You know, they can feel that there's a real chemistry between the two characters because there's actual chemistry together between the actors. But here's the thing. Listen to the microphone quality. Then we promise to love each other a lot. Yes. And then we keep on loving each other a lot. Forever. Sounds perfect. I'm sure there's no shock when I say this. Uh, I've had webcam microphones that sounded way better than that. I'm assuming that they must have done the original voice acting in Spanish and then translated it into English last minute for the English speaking festivals, but the mouth flaps matched too well for that to be so. I guess they just had an oversight in that department because the music and the sound design otherwise are just great. I did not pick this film just to criticize it, though. It's probably one of the best short films I've seen in a long time, despite the unfortunate voice acting quality. And one of the reasons is that it has a cell shaded 3D art style. As someone that grew up with cell shaded 3D style video games from the early 2000s, like Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, Sly Cooper, and Beautiful Joe. I really love that specific style. While cell shaded might not be the proper term for it, I don't care because that's how I see it. It's toony and glossy just a little bit, and it's put to 3D animation, therefore cell shaded. The camera effects added to this really work with the tone of each scene as well. Like when the camera gives a subtle wobble, similar to an actual video or film camera filming something in real life, and that just makes it more cinematic. Because that's a very, I don't know how you would call it, Hollywood thing to do? Let's go with that. It also appears in more amateur films, like on YouTube and all that. I know there isn't an actual real camera filming this 3D animation, but that's the, the trick behind it, and it's also what they call it in the animation programs. Now, fun fact, the creators of this film had trouble finding what's called a render farm. Uh, that's a special place where films, 3D animations, and other high-quality visual media gets encoded and exported out using high-powered computers. And they apparently are uncommon in their home country of Chile, so they outsourced it to China. 
And without going into spoilers, I mentioned that this is a more realistic approach to issues in a marriage, mostly because there's no wacky or overly dramatic hijinks that go on, like you would find in a rom-com or a cartoon, and it doesn't need them really. The story told is greatly executed, if a bit predictable in some areas. Basically, there are two outcomes when it comes to a couple compromising and working out their problems in a relationship. Either they find a way for it to work, which is mainly what you want to see, or they don't, and they break up. I won't spoil what happens right now, but suffice to say it ended in a satisfactory way. But before that ending even comes up, there is still a very cute and belovable couple that we're seeing here. Y you want them to succeed because they're good people, animal people, and they're humble and they're empathetic and flawed but in a good way. And again, the drama and tension between them really works well, which probably makes or breaks a romantic story, honestly. I don't know. I wouldn't know, because I don't consume a lot of romance stories. Now on to spoilers. Click to uh, this time on the timeline here to avoid being spoiled or just pause the video and watch the film in the link in the description there. It's less than 20 minutes long. It's, you know, if you don't care, sit back and relax. There's a good amount of parallels and callbacks that I want to bring up, even if they are brought up pretty obviously when watching this film. For example, the tiny little plastic cupcake from their wedding cake figures. Now, it's both a representation of their dream of opening a bakery one day and their dream of living a happy relationship as well. You could also attribute that to the little Doug and Kate figurines that they keep having to glue together. Symbolism there. Once because Doug is a clumsy goober and also elbows his wife in the nose. And later on when their relationship has finally begun to crumble. Good bit of foreshadowing there actually. I'm not going to dismiss this film for being anything less than ocean deep because I'm not that type of critic and I don't think this film needed to be super deep either. But switching topics, it might have been more interesting to see sort of what their workplace was like and how that might have contributed to issues with their marriage and why some of these projects that they're working on, mainly the wife, set her back so much, kept her from getting home at a time that wasn't super late at night. I mean, we see that Doug ends up working for a copy place, eventually moving up to what I assume is owning the actual place as like a franchise manager, and Kate going from the lowly office job to the moderate office job that sucks the life right out of her. Some of you have been there. Maybe the filmmakers didn't want to muddy anything and focus just on how their relationship was going, which is understandable. One more thing. I appreciate the sledgehammer going through a wall as a possible symbol of them breaking through their barriers and finally becoming a happy couple again, but I can't help but wonder how that would look in real life. I mean, it's probably the funniest thing about the film, and I enjoyed watching it just because of how much it contrasts from the rest of the movie. Alright, spoilers over. Overall, we have a nice little film that I would recommend to just about anyone. It's sincere, it's cute, maybe a little tear-jerking to those that don't want to admit it. But now comes the more important question. How furry is it? Let's examine this baker's tale using my chance system, a handy rubric I use to break down furry aspects in media, those being cast, harmony, anthropocentrism, narrative, commonality, and expression. Let's start with cast, or how many narratively important characters that are furry. This film only has two, Kate and Doug. So that's that, right? Four out of four. But that's no fun. So let's keep this thought process going. We never see the faces of any other character, actually, just the backs of their heads, and I'll bring this up later. So the focus of the film truly is just on our couple. I don't think they have dialogue either. That means I can't really compare any physical features, characteristics, voices, or other details between the main couple and other characters, so I'll just leave it there. With a whopping two out of two main characters that are anthro, we start off with a four out of four. Next is harmony, or how natural the furries are to this setting. Well, they're natural in that there is nothing but furries in this film. We got baking furries, business furries, barista furries, more business furries, depressed furries, any kind you can think of. 
I know that probably just describes the main two characters, but they are constantly in the spotlight, almost like the story's about them or something. I kid, but I do wish I had more to talk about with this aspect. Kinda hard to describe the world of furries when more scenes center around the two main characters inside their house than anything else. Oh well, them being unremarkable is another 4 out of 4. Moving on to anthropocentrism, or how close these furries are to being human. If it weren't for their outer animal appearance, they would just be people. It makes me wonder why they were a cat and dog anyway, outside of the plausible reference to a phrase or idiom similar to, like, fighting like cats and dogs. Is that a thing? That's my best guess, because I've seen enough media, namely Tom and Jerry and Pound Puppies, where cats and dogs just don't get along very well. Oh, and there's that other movie, Cats and Dogs. They even have stereotypes and, I guess, mean words that they call each other. But that's not the type of story we're telling here, is it? No, we have a married couple arguing like two frustrated bakers that just so happen to also be walking animal people. Four out of four in terms of anthropocentrism. And next is narrative, or how important these furries' animal nature is to the narrative. Now, these anthros exist in a world like Zootopia or Sing, the Illumination film, but without any of the death or humor in species dynamics or other things, none of them actually call each other by their species names or really talk about being a cat or a dog that bakes cupcakes. You're missing an opportunity here. It would be more impressive and creative. And this is just a crazy idea. I just came up with this. If these were sentient baked goods, making other baked goods to be sold to stores, kind of like a dramatic and grimdark Shopkins, but actually kind of terrible now that I think about that. Um, let's forget I ever mentioned that. Anyway, these are more like humans walking around in animal bodies, which is fine, but they don't even have any jokes about fur getting into their baking, so I unfortunately have to guess this a goose egg zero out of four. Then we have commonality, or how prevalent anthros are outside of the main cast. Again, clearly nothing but anthropomorphic animals inhabiting this setting. I'm frustrated if you can't tell, because I feel like I'm going around over the same tracks uh, again and again in this film. As much as I love it, it doesn't really give me anything interesting to talk about in terms of furriness and some of these qualities. I already said we barely see what background and side characters sort of look like, act like, talk like, how this shapes the main character's world's views, you know, how this would shape the audience's perspective and what messages are behind it. Forget what I said about muddying the main focus. You know, I'm a nerd for anthropomorphic animal characters, which is why I started this channel in the first place, and we have a world of all furries and no humans, but I'm peeved that I can't talk about it as much as I want to right now. <sighs> All right, sorry, rant over. Uh, four out of four for commonality. Finally, we have expression or how furry they actually look. Now we get to a part that I can talk about. Though, as I mentioned before, humans inside animal bodies. They have hands instead of paws and I'm not sure about their feet because I never actually saw any feet at all on these characters on camera. That's one way to save on your production's budget. Uh, not a lot of obvious animal traits, although they add one little detail. We keep living happily together. Yes, they kiss by licking each other. I'm gonna let that slide. I know that looks weird, but maybe muzzle to muzzle kisses looks awkward. I know some shows can get away with it, but regardless, with expression, I'm gonna give this a rating of 2 out of 4. After a tally of each score, we have a total of 18 out of a possible 24. Talk about a whiplash review. We go from praising this film and all its qualities to frustration that it's not high enough in certain anthropomorphic aspects. But that just shows you how passionate about this film I am. It's, it's great. You, you should have watched it by now, honestly. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. I know, we're so happy now, even if we can barely make it every month. But with the bakery, we would be stable. It would mean ensuring our happiness, you know? That would always be the two of us, making cupcakes. Wouldn't it be nice? You're nice. But, now, if you remember, 
I told you guys to stick around until the end for a special task, a little mission. It's simple. After watching this video all the way through, type in animated short film in the search bar above and just watch some quality goodness for yourself. You know, enjoy yourselves, everyone. This has been Gregor Baked Bad's Reindeer with How Furry Is It? Click on the like button if you enjoyed what you saw, and subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more anthro analysis and antler antics. And since you're still here, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. Patreon lets you pay creators like me directly through a monthly paid subscription, and if you're generous enough, you can even have your name in the credits before each review, or help me co-produce a review. I also have a special Discord server for my patrons, but you can also send me single donations through coffee. That's K-O-F-I. And as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.